I will start with the basics and wherever it is required to go deep in that, I will be, you know, going and giving examples to make a student understand the concepts. Uh, so let me share the screen first. Okay, uh, friends, uh, sorry for the delay for the students. Uh, so I believe that uh, most of you have uh, gone through this subject in your uh, agriculture first year or second year. Uh, so I will be discussing with you the basic concepts of intellectual property rights, okay? And then obviously I will also tell you why it is necessary and beneficial for startups. So before I start with the uh, basics first, let me first tell you that uh, intellectual property is nothing but the creation of a human mind, okay? So anything which is the creation of a human mind can be termed as intellectual property. Most of us knows property only in two sense. First is movable property, another is immovable property. But you know, uh, law has also recognized uh, your intellectual creations as property and it has named it intellectual property. And just like uh, immovable and movable property, uh, the creator of intellectual property also have various rights on that creation on that property, as well as certain limitations and exceptions are also there. Just like in your property, you have all the rights, uh, like you have the right to sale, right to you know mortgage, or right to gift your property, or right to abandon your property. But apart from that, you have certain limitations on your uh, physical properties. Sometimes the government can acquire it for development purpose and then it can give you some kind of remuneration, some very good remuneration or some very good uh, amount for that. So just like uh, movable and immovable properties, we have to understand intellectual property in that sense, okay? And it is very much your property. You can have all the rights over it just like you have over other types of property. So there is a very, you know, uh, uh, since the inception of new IP, uh, you know, IP policy. Uh, we got the IP policy in 2016. Since then, so many, you know, uh, awareness programs have been conducted by the government to make pupil, make students, creators, innovators, entrepreneurs, medium and small enterprises to make them understand the importance of IP. So here also we are going to begin one of the session for you, uh, which is uh, solely for the purpose of awareness to the young entrepreneurs. So if we go by the definition, the definition says it's a legal rights which results from intellectual activity in the industrial, scientific, literary, and artistic fields. So any kind of creativity which results from industrial, scientific, literary, or artistic field. So anything which resulted from any kind of an activity and that activity is being done by following some industrial process, some scientific, some literary, or some artistic work, then whatever comes out of it will be your property, and then you have certain rights on that property, which we call as intellectual property rights. Again, in the in normal sense, if we take it uh, very lightly, uh, we, we need to define it very simply, we can say that it's a property that arises from human intellect. Means it's a creation of a human mind. It's a product of human creation. And then we can say that it is basically comprises of two different forms. First is literary and artistic work. Another is industry. So for the understanding of uh, everyone, uh, the the lawmakers or we can say the policy makers have yeah. divided yes anyone the policy makers have divided intellectual property into two categories first is literary and artistic please sir, continue uh, i think it was some type of disturbance A student has and another is industrial property So again, there is another classification. First is tangible, another is intangible. Tangible includes movable properties, which we can touch like car, paint, furniture, dress. In, in intangible, we also have certain immovable properties like land and buildings. So this is another classification for a property. Sir, please continue, uh, sir. 
okay 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 thank you and we have intangible property which includes intellectual property literary works and inventions so now we need to understand how intellectual property is a property you know uh, you might be knowing that if you own a house if you own a building if you own a car if you own a bike if you own anything you are the owner of that property then you have certain rights like right to so right to sell it okay a right to re uh, purchase it you can give it on lease or you can give it on rent you can also assign the certain rights in that property like if you have a right if you have a house you can give certain rights like you can you can allow your you know friend or, or your relative to stay in your house so you have given certain rights you have assigned certain rights to that person because it's a property you are the owner of that building or that uh, flat you can also make a will of your property you can also sell your property you can abandon your property just like that in intellectual property also you have all those rights and all these rights are enshrined the laws like we have the patent law the copyright law i will tell you so uh, that we need to understand another is uh, if we talk about the nature means uh, we, if we need to understand that what is the nature what is the you know features of that intellectual property so i have summarized in certain points and these four or five points actually lays the foundation for uh, the whole lecture which i am going to discuss with you number one it's a creation of a human mind uh, i told i told you in the big of a human mind okay and uh, it's, it's it's the simplest possible definition of i if someone ask you what is intellectual property you just say to him anything which is the creation of a human mind and that creation of a human mind must be something which is solely which is solely coming into existence due to the application of mind of that particular person who claims himself or herself to be the creator of that property so it should not be something like a uh, uh, remaking or copying like if you know i am a very good artist okay if i see something some painting of someone else and i draw the same painting and then i claim a right that this is something which is made by me obviously i cannot say that i will have certain rights of that so that creation must be a new creation and based on the types of creation we have categorized intellectual property into different forms that please keep in mind because uh, you may create an artistic work you may create a new technology for artistic work we have protection obviously we can protect it as an ip we can claim intellectual property rights on that artistic work but for that protection we have different types as copyright and if someone has created a new technology i mentioned then for that we have uh, obviously we have the ip for it ip protection for it we can claim intellectual property rights but that ip is protected in the form of patents so i will tell you each and every point in detail first of all let me understand let me please tell you clearly that it's the creation of a human mind it is intangible property meaning thereby the the property in intellectual creation is intangible you cannot touch it you cannot feel it it is intangible it's not like movable and immovable properties which you can touch it. then exclusive rights given by statute if we talk about intellectual property then uh, we have different statutes like the copyright act the patent act the trademark act the semiconductor act the layout design act there are so many laws based on different forms of ip all these laws gives the creator of that intellectual property exclusive rights exclusivity you get monopoly you get exclusivity right these are attended with certain limitations and exception okay uh, i told you in the just preceding this point i told you that intellectual property rights are exclusive rights okay they are exclusive but again they are also having certain limitations certain exceptions i told you the limitations and exceptions when i discuss any one particular type of right it is time bound number one 
is time bound. Time bound means uh, intellectual property is uh, not given. You are not given exclusive rights for indefinite period of time, except in certain cases like in trade secrets, you can have uh, the rights over trade secret for an indefinite period of time. Otherwise, every IP has its lifetime. Every intellectual property has its lifetime. In that sense, it, it is different from uh, physical or you can say movable and immovable properties because movable property, if someone like, and let us suppose if I bought this uh, paper weight, uh, I bought it for some money. Uh, I have the ownership of that paper weight uh, for an indefinite period of time. I bought a house. Uh, I will have the ownership of that house for an indefinite period of time. But this is not the case with IP. It has its life. Copyright has its life. Patent has its life. Everything I will tell you. Then the last point we need to understand here is territoriality. The concept of territoriality. Territoriality means that intellectual property is territorial in nature. It means that if you have created an intellectual property and you have claimed a right on that intellectual property, which we call as an intellectual property rights within some territory, then you can enjoy those rights within that territory only, wherein you have registered your intellectual property. You cannot enjoy the rights on that intellectual property in any other territory. Like if you have an invention, for example, if you have created an invention, or since you are most of you are the students of agriculture in your department or college, I can tell you one example from your field. Let, let us suppose uh, most of you have created a new plant variety. Okay. And then uh, uh, let me tell you one uh, background regarding new plant variety. Uh, we have a law for the protection and registration of new plant varieties as an intellectual property. The law is known as the protection of new plant varieties and farmers rights act 2001 uh, before coming into existence of this law 2001 uh, we actually protect uh, new plant varieties as a patent all right but now since we have a law for that we can go for new plant variety registration it is an ip law it is one of the form one of the branch of ip law so new plant varieties can be registered as uh, as a new plant variety. We have the law for that. So if you register a new plant variety under the new plant varieties and you register it within India, then territoriality means you can enjoy the rights whatever given to you under the new plant varieties and farmers right act only within the territory of India not beyond the territory of it. If you want to get the benefits of your new plant variety, uh, you need to be registered uh, in other territories. If you have not registered it within a uh, prescribed period of time within any other territory, you will not be giving any kind of benefit in that territory. Right? Then, uh, you know, it has some economic rights for the creators, IP. Uh, there, are, there is a provision for commercial exploitation of IP by the owner. Obviously, if you are the owner of an intellectual property, you can uh, you are entitled to certain commercial uh, exploitations. You are entitled to have some kind of revenue. You are entitled to exploit your IP. You are entitled to make money out of your intellectual property. You have all the rights. You can do all these things. Uh, you can do the capital expenditure also. You can also transfer the technology from uh, your company, your startup, or uh, your um, company, your firm to any other firm. And obviously, it also leads to cultural development of the country. So, having said this, uh, if we try to understand the broadest possible definition, though it is not an exhaustive definition again. We can say that this is a definition given by WIPO. It says that IP or intellectual property shall include the rights relating to literary, artistic, and scientific works, performances of performing artists, phonograms, and broadcasts. I will take up these two points first. Uh, so, literary, artistic, and scientific work, performances of performing artists, phonograms, and broadcasts, all these things can be registered. Uh, they, they are included 
uh, within the definition of IP. And uh, for that, we have a different form of an IP which we call as copyright. So based on the creation, based on what type of intellectual creation anyone comes out with, we have classified intellectual properties into different forms. So if the intellectual creation is a literary, artistic or a scientific work, it will be given protection as an intellectual property. And this particular specific IP is known as copyright. Then performances of performing artists, phonograms and broadcasts. Again, this is associated rights. In copyright, uh, we, when we read copyright law, uh, we actually read it as copyright and related rights. Copyright and related rights. So, performance of performing artists, phonograms, and broadcasts, all these comes within the uh, within the framework of uh, related rights relating to copyright. Then the third point is inventions in all fields of human endeavor. Okay, so for that, if this is the type of intellectual creation by someone, then obviously uh, it is an intellectual creation, so it shall be your IP. But what uh, specific name is given to that kind of an intellectual property when you get it registered? The specific name is patents. So for inventions, we have patent, right? Patent is an IP. So please don't confuse. Most of the students have a very, you know, so much confusion in understanding. Someone says to me, some new students, when they come to college or university, they say, sir, what is the difference between IPR and copyright? What is the difference between IPR and patent? how patent is different from IPR. So rather than trying to differentiate these two things, we have to understand that things, these things are same. IP is a broad term. Copyright is also an IPR. Patent is also an intellectual property. Trademark is also an intellectual property, your IP. But these are certain specific types of IP. These are certain specific names given to specific type of intellectual creations. I'm again reiterating, if you come out with a literary, artistic or a scientific work, it is your creation. You need to give in certain kind of protection. So what kind of protection should be given? Intellectual property protection. What is specific kind of protection in IP? This is copyright. If you come out with an invention, you will be given an IP protection. What is specific type of IP protection? This is fitting. Scientific discoveries are also protected. Industrial designs are protected as we, before uh, the coming into existence of industrial design law, no, these designs are actually being protected. Uh, some uh, designs can be protected under copyright law as they um, are considered as you know, literary artistic work. Certain designs uh, may be registered as design paintings, but now we have the Industrial Design Act. So every design must be registered under that act as a separate type of IP, as I told you that regarding any type of a uh, new plant variety created by any researcher, any student, any professor, any agriculture scientist, any farmer or you know, anyone who is doing that uh, work on that variety. So they are given different uh, separate protection in that law, obviously, and that is also their IP. But when uh, before 2001, what, will, what was the position? Because this new plant varieties law and this industrial design law, they came into existence in 2001 only. So before 2001, all these things were given protection in the earlier existing forms of IP. Like if we talk about industrial design, some designs may be given protection under copyright. Some designs uh, may have been registered as design patents. Like if we, uh, if we talk about some new plant varieties before 2001, let us suppose someone has created a new plant variety in 1990. At that particular point of time, we were not having the law for the protection and registration and recognition of a new plant variety as an intellectual property, then what would have been the situation, how we have been giving uh, protection or motivation or recognition to farmers, scientists, agriculture scientists, or new entrepreneurs in that particular field. Obviously, at that particular point of time, we were having the laws for patent. So we were taking the help of that law and we were actually registering new plant varieties as a new invention. We considered it as an invention and we registered it as a patent. Okay, 
than trademark service mark commercial names and designations all these things are again you know different types of interesting creations if someone is wants to start a new business someone want to start a new you know uh, a new startup uh, so they will have to think of uh, some kind of innovative name some catchy name some attractive name some brand name whatever may be that so when you coin the term or you coin a trademark or a service mark or any commercial names or designations for your startup or for your companies whatever the case may be you will be given protection under the trademark law for that particular trademark service mark or whatever it can be then uh, you are also given protection against unfair competition under the ip law there is a balance between ip and competition law because as one point of time i told you in the first slide that intellectual property gives you exclusivity it gives you exclusivity it gives you monopoly for a limited period of time you get the monopoly over that creation because you have invented it you have exercised a lot of research on that you have you did a lot of research and development uh, for the coming into existence of that particular type of an ip and since you have done so much of research you have invented so much of money you have in, you have invested so much of your time your energy your effort so you must be given the fruits for that creation so you must be the person who should enjoy the fruits of that intellectual creation that is why this intellectual property system came into existence and it actually promotes monopoly up to some extent but that monopoly is not absolute it is limited and it is only for a limited period of time if we give absolute monopoly then obviously the inventors the creators or the owners of intellectual property will start you know uh, dominating the market they will start you know exploiting it to an extent which would otherwise results into uh, which would otherwise uh, result into damage to the society to the progress of the nation uh, in general so that is why there is a perfect balance between intellectual property and competition law because the role of competition law is to limit the competition or sorry is to limit the monopoly and promote competition so that is why uh, these two laws works in tandem uh, so the aim of these two laws the ip law as well as the competition law is to promote competition and have a limited time to monopoly then in the last paragraph uh, this definition has made uh, ip the understanding of ip or the scope of ip as an inclusive one uh, so that people may not be confused that whatever written in these four five lines these are only the intellectual properties over which uh, these are only the intellectual creations over which you can enjoy the intellectual property rights rather the last two lines say if intellectual property shall includes the rights relating to all other rights resulting from intellectual activity in industrial scientific literary or artistic field so it means that it's not only about literary artistic scientific work it's not only about uh, performance of performing artists it's not only about patents or inventions or trademark or trade secrets or whatever but if you have come out with anything from an intellectual activity in the industrial scientific literary or artistic field then over that particular thing also you can enjoy intellectual property so till now if anyone has any doubt or any confusion you can tell me uh, otherwise i will move ahead if there is any question till now because these are the basics now i will move ahead with the specific type of ips anyone having any question so uh, if we talk about uh, ip law okay uh, we have copyright law we have patent law we have trademark so and so forth we have all the laws for the protection of all types of intellectual property uh, but uh, these laws drives their authority or these laws drive uh, their existence is basically based on certain international treaties because uh, we derive the content from that treaties we apply it in our circumstances and then we adopt a new local law for that country 
So if we talk about international treaties, uh, we have the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property, 1883. This was the first and foremost convention for the protection of IP. Then we have Bern Convention. This is basically for copyright, for the trade in artistic work. Uh, we also have Universal Copyright Convention. This is not listed here. Universal Copyright Convention came into existence uh, because most of the countries have joined Bern Convention, but some has not joined Bern Convention. For that, excuse me, uh, copyright, Universal Copyright Convention came into existence. Then we have International Union for New Varieties of Plants, that is UPOV Convention. This convention came into existence in 1961. It is revised in 72, 78, and 1991. This UPOV convention basically talks about protection of new plant varieties. And it was the convention which says in 1961 that there should be a, a mechanism for the protection of new plant variety. So this convention says to the countries, to the nations who are the parties to that convention, who have signed that convention, that you should at least have a new law for the protection of new plant varieties, or if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a new law for that uh, plant varieties, then in that situation you have to give protection to those plant varieties uh, under the existing laws. Then we have Convention on Biodiversity 1992 Agreement on Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. This is in 1995. We have Internet Treaties 1996. Now, when it comes to the protection of intellectual property right, there may arise a question in your mind that uh, why are we are given intellectual property right? What is the genesis or what is the rationale of giving any creator, any owner or any inventor an absolute monopoly over the creation. So how this, uh, and this how these rights comes into existence? Kaha se hai, how they are being given? So it is actually it actually comes from a contract between the creator. The creator can be you, me, or anyone else, and the sovereign state. Sovereign state is the government of India, the patent office, the copyright office. If in general or if in particular we want to say. It can be a patent office, it can be a copyright office, it can be a trademark office, it can be uh, any other office. So there is actually a contract between the creator and the sovereign state. What is that contract? Because when we apply for the protection of copyright or trademark or whatever patents, there actually exists a contract between the creator and the government, the sovereign state. The, it is an implied contract. Because we have to give certain papers, we have to show that this is our creation, we have to give certain proofs for that also. And based on that, we have to reveal our creations. So it is actually a protection for revealing that we are revealing to the patent office that see, this is my invention, this is new, this is novel, this has not been done earlier. So kindly give a protection on that. So this actually works on that kind of a principle. This IP system is working on that particular principle. It is a contract between the creator and the sovereign state. Then there is also one important thing that needs to be keep in mind for entrepreneurs is that there should be a balance between the rights of the creator and public interest. Obviously, the IP system gives you absolute right. But within that IP law, you are also are required to go through certain limitations. Okay, so there is a perfect balance between rights and limitations. I will give you examples whenever I take uh, any other type of property. So for the time being, uh, I can tell you that these are the major intellectual properties, copyright and related rights, industrial property, patents, industrial designs, trademark, geographical indications, layout design, that is the topography, integrated circuits, protection of new plant varieties, right? So these are the major intellectual properties which we are going to understand briefly. These are the different acts, like the Copyright Act, the Patent Act, the Design Act, 
the trademark act, the geographical indications of goods act, the CBC under 28 circuit layout design act, the production of plant varieties and farmers rights act. So this is the higher uh, this copyright act comes within the higher education department. Uh, this is uh, governed by the Ministry of Industrial Policy and Promotion. These are the ministries, and you can see the last. This is uh, very much relevant for you, or uh, for the agriculture or science students. The protection of <clears throat> the protection of plant varieties and farmers' rights act 2001. Uh, this is uh, governed by the Ministry of Agriculture, right? So this is uh, these are all the law. These are all the major intellectual properties, and this here. These are the corresponding laws which governs the regulation, protection, enforcement, limitation of that property. So all these things which are there. Yeah. So you know, for copyright we have the copyright in 1957. For patent, patent is given for inventions. For inventions we have a different type of IP which we call as patent. For patent we have a different law, patent act. If industrial design we have the design act 2000. So that is how you need to understand that. For every different type of IP, we have different laws. Now I will take it from copyright very quickly. Uh, if we talk about the scope of protection, means what kind of intellectual creations, what kind of intellectual work are given protection under copyright? So this is the original literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic form. Original. It's not copied work. If the literary work is original, dramatic, musical, artistic, even the notes. Even if you have three, if you are preparing certain notes from my lecture, uh, these are uh, your creations. You have the copyright on that because every uh, student will be, you know, if they are trying to note down certain things. They are trying to write it in their own way, and that is why their own uh, literary work is protected, dramatic, musical, and artistic work. But that work must be expressed in some material form. There is no copyright in ideas or facts. Okay. Ideas and facts are not protected under copyright, and then we can take an example of cinematographic film. Over that also we have the copyright protection. Sound recordings also are protected under copyright law. There are two kinds of rights which are given in copyright. First is the moral right, another is the economic rights. Economic rights obviously means to bring some economic benefit. That is, if you have a copyright, you have the rights to make some money out of it. You can, you know, make publication of that work. You can, you know, translate that work into another language wherein that work may be in demand. So this is how you can make money out of that work. Moral rights means uh, the protection of the personality of the author. So you know, uh, it gives protection to the author that he will be remain or uh, he will be known as the author of that work. Uh, we are certain rights under the moral rights that the right of authorship right of integrity digital manipulation no right for dispute and please keep in mind that moral rights are inalienable rights even uh, commercial rights that is uh, economic rights may be taken away from the owner or the author of a copyright after the expiry of the term of copyright but the moral rights are inalienable rights they cannot be eliminated From the author, even after the expiry of the term of copyright, economic rights includes right of reproduction, right of distribution, that is, human copies, and obviously the right to communicate the work to the public. Like if you know, I am uh, having, I am a very good artist. I am very good in dance, and I am performing a dance on a very particular song. Uh, someone has invited me you know, for their, you know. Let us suppose for their college events, college festivals, and uh, if I am doing some kind of a performance, you know that even if I am performing on someone else work, but the kind of performance I am doing is unique to me, and I am entitled to get it protected. So this is also uh, unique in mind that public performances and internet communication, all these things are are uh, protected in the copyright. Then there are certain adaptation rights in the copyright that is conversion into another form that is literary to drama, abridgement, translation. These are all given to you as an author of a copyright that you can do. Ah, uh, you can you have the adaptation right that you can convert your work into literary to work to drama and stuff like this. Ah, uh, you have the right to make a cinematographic film or sound recording. Ah, uh, you have the right to translate that work, rental rights, using rights for using artistic work. and uh, these are certain terms which are used in copyright law like 
you have developed an affinity work you will be known as an author if you are a priest or of a drama you will be known as a dramatist so and so for the very simple terms like in dance if you can see that if you are uh, if you have created some sound recording you will be known as a producer uh, if you are making a cinematography film you will be a producer you are known so all all these persons are having rights on those creations if you have created a photograph if you have taken a photograph you will be known as a photographer and you will have the copyright on that but there are certain exceptions which i will tell you these are the exceptions to copyright that let us suppose if you are employed by a company uh, and you are the content creator for that company so in that case uh, you are creating a content for that company that let us suppose could be a media house or uh, something like this uh, where the employer is paying you the remuneration for that work so in case you are being employed for that work only and you are being paid for that Uh, you are not entitled to a copyright on that work because the copyright will be vest with the employer, not with the employee, because employee is being paid for that work. That work. Similarly, if there is an employment by newspaper magazine, employer has a publishing rights. Other rights may rest with the author. A painting or a cinema for a valuable consideration. If someone pays the money for that. Obviously, the person who pays the money will be having the copyright on that. You might have seen that if you have uh, gone to uh, visit some uh, place, like let us suppose some uh, tourist destination, uh, and someone uh, having a DSLR camera, people roaming here and there, they may ask you that if you need uh, some good photograph from my DSLR camera, you can consent to it. and once he click that photo and you have given that money to him uh, obviously the photograph is taken by that person who is an expert in that field who has the you know the required skills to take a very good photograph so in normal sense that photographer would be having a copyright on that photograph but since you have paid the money for that photo to that photographer so now the rights regarding that photograph will be vested in you okay you have all the rights similar is the case with the painting if someone uh, if like you have requested someone to paint for you uh, then obviously the painter will not be having any rights in case of cinema also it happens uh, it is not the uh, actor or actresses or the star cast who is having the copyright on that movie And because all these persons are being paid for that work, right? Uh, so it is the uh, basically it is the producer, the person who makes money or who inject money into that movie. He is having the rights. These are again the like in case of government work, the government will be having copyright, okay? Because you know uh, you are being employed by the government, you are performing your duty, you are being Paid for that, uh, so the copyright rests with the government. Uh, there are certain other examples uh, like uh, work of an apprentice if they belong to a teacher. Uh, question paper, the paper setter will be having encyclopedia edition to the editor for collection. Music under a contract by a film producer, obviously the film producer will have that. Now, when we talk about the registration of a copyright, uh, registration is free. It is voluntary. It is not compulsory. Uh, it is uh, up to you if you want to get a register you can register it otherwise uh, there is formality free protection if we talk about duration then the duration of copyright is life of the author plus 60 years so this is the rule in india uh, if we go by the international convention international convention say that uh, the copyright protection must be given for at least life of the author plus at least 50 years at least 50 years provision is here so we have uh, incorporated that provision but we are giving protection for uh, 60 years these are related rights that uh, right granted by the law to the communicators of the work to the public that is performers and broadcasting rights these are also given to copyright performers performers rights include recording broadcasting and communicating to the public of a live performance and there is a presumption of a transfer of a performance right to a cinematographer And that is for a period of twenty years. Broadcasting rights are also included within copyright. It includes broadcast, reproduction rights, rebroadcasting, 
recording and communicating to the public of a broadcast. Like you might be seeing a broadcast of an IPL match by Jio Cinema. So this also involves uh, you know copyright protection. That is for a period of twenty five years. Now patent. Uh, this is another type of an IP. Please keep in mind. I have discussed with you copyright. Copyright is given over literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic work. And copyright is also given over some certain other uh, works, like uh, we call the term as a copyright and patent rights. So that is why the concept of performers rights, broadcasting rights comes into copyright. When we talk about patent, it is an exclusive right granted for an individual. So please keep in mind that if you have, if the creation of a human mind is an invention, it is an intellectual property. No, no doubt about it. It's your property, intellectual property, and since it's an intellectual property, the law gives protection on that. So you will be having certain rights. You will be having intellectual property rights on your invention, and these intellectual property rights is known as patent in the case of an invention. If you have a patent, you can. If you have an invention, you can get it registered as a patent. So it's an exclusive right granted for an invention, which is a product or a process. That invention may be a product, or it can be a process of making that product. So a product can be protected as well as a process. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Ah, sir, the sound is coming. Your. Okay, okay. Am I audible? Ah, yes, you are audible. Okay. so it provides a new way of doing something or it offers a new technical solution to a problem so invention means something uh, you know which is which provides a new way of doing something or it offers a new technical solution to a problem so there may be a some problem or there may be a, you know uh, there may be a solution to an already existing problem but the solution is not perfect so if you come out with some solution to an already existing technical problem Uh, and that, that solution is new and novel. Then you can consider that particular thing as an invention, and over that invention, you will be having intellectual property rights in the form of patent, right? And this is a limited monopoly right. It is granted by the state, by the government, uh, by the patent office. It enables an inventor to prohibit another person from manufacturing, using, or selling the patented product, or from using the patented process without permission. So it is again a kind of a monopoly right given to you. Once you have a patent, uh, you actually prohibit any other person other than you. No person can make it. No person can manufacture that invention. No person can even use that invention, even if it is made by you. You cannot use it without your permission. No person can sell it. So these are the prohibitions when you get once you get the patent. So that is why you know this is this is the you know beauty of IP system. So it is very important for startups to know that if you have a new technology, please get it registered as soon as possible, because it is not only the money the value of a company which is important, but rather the intellectual. capital is also very important so once there are mergers and takeovers it is very important and ip plays a very important role and it's not only your turnover which comes into play when someone is trying to merge with you or someone is trying to take over you but your intellectual assets is the plays a very prominent so how many patents you have how many copyrights you have how many trade secrets you have how many uh, you know other ip rights you are having that actually plays a very important role and this limited monopoly this limited right which is given to you as an exclusive right is only for a period of 20 years what can be patented and please keep in mind that everything every invention in all field of technology whether they are product or process they can be protect they can be patented if they meet the criteria of novelty non obviousness and industrial applicability i will try to explain novelty non obviousness and industrial applicability in short see novelty means your invention is new it is not known to public prior to the claim by the end if you are claiming something as your own creation as your own invention Then 
you have to be very sure that even if you have created an honesty, even if you claim to be the honest creator of that invention, you have to be very careful, you have to be very aware that it should not have been invented before. Because sometimes it happens that uh, you are trying to, you know, build up something, you are trying to invent something, but you are not aware of the existing state of technology. You are not knowing what are the technologies which are in existence. And sometimes it happens that you are reinventing the same thing. In that case, obviously, uh, your invention lacks novelty and you will not be given any kind of protection for that. So you have to be very, very careful whenever you take on any project uh, in your BSc, MSc or any kind of uh, research, you are have to be very careful and you have to go through the prior art searching or we can say that the literature review, you should do the literature review, you should go through the uh, registered patents or registered you know, papers or registered technologies which are in use and it is not very difficult you can do it very easily online various you know platforms are available wherein you can just uh, enter uh, a certain keywords wherein uh, you will get all the existing research all the existing technologies all the existing patents relating to that particular field and then you can move ahead with your research because that way you may be able to know that this is the existing state of art, this is the existing state of literature available in that particular field, and this is the this is the present state of technology. Now, if I move ahead with that uh, research, I can come up with some new technology. So this is how you need to be very careful. Now, if you establish that your invention is new, let us suppose, obviously, then not only being new is enough your invention must also have an inventive step inventive step means the invention should not be obvious to a person with ordinary skill in that art okay inventive step means the invention should not be obvious uh, because there are certain things like if i am a computer engineer you are a mechanical engineer someone is agriculture scientist uh, there are certain art, there are certain technologies, there are certain things which are obvious to us, which we learn in that uh, particular, uh, you know, field, uh, which are expected by any person from us that you are, you being a person of that particular field, you must be knowing that art, that literature, that technology. So what's new in that? So that is why it is very important for us to establish that our invention also have an inventive step. And this is, uh, this you can do while showing that it is not obvious to you. Rather, you are doing it beyond the existing things which you know. Industrial application is a third point which are uh, required that your invention can be made. It, your invention must have some kind of industrial utility, some kind of industrial use. Okay. It must have some kind of practical use. Grants or patents are patents are granted by the National Patent Office. Uh, there is an examination procedure. I am not going into that detail uh, because otherwise uh, we will be you know like behind our prescribed time. Uh, we can take it up some other day because uh, it will take a whole at least one hour for that. Uh, in India, there is a provision for pre-grant as well as post-grant positions by the Patent Office. Uh, they are valid with the territorial limits of the country. I told you that patent is a territorial right. If you register a patent within India, you will have the patent only within India. Only. You can exercise the rights only within India. Only. But just like you have the right to apply for a patent outside India, the foreigners are also having the right to apply for patent. There are certain non-patentable inventions under the law. I am not going into that aspect. Uh, there are certain things which are excluded from the category of patents or from being given patent right because of some policy decisions. Now I will go on to the industrial designs. Let me tell you the definition of design. Design means only the features of shape. I think my cam is not visible. Design means only the features of shape, configuration, pattern, ornament, or composition of lines or colors 
apply to any article, whether in two dimensional or three dimensional or in both forms, by any industrial process or means, whether manual, mechanical, chemical, separate or combined, which in the first article appeal to and others will be done. So let me tell you and let me explain you uh, by just you know by breaking this definition into various points. Number one, design means only the features of shape, configuration, pattern, ornament, or composition of items. Right? Features of shape, configuration, pattern, ornament, or composition of lines. Only the features of shape. Design is only about appearance. What is being seen by your naked eye? Industrial design has nothing to do with the uh, uh, technical aspect. It has nothing to do with the working of any. Like we are very well aware of the design of a kola puri chappal, which we call as kola puri chappal or sleeper. Most of us agree that this kola puri chappal is not very comfortable in our uh, in our foot. Uh, but we, we wear it on occasions. So design is not about uh, the working. And most of us agree that uh, Skechers shoes, if we wear Skechers shoes of a very good, you know, technology which they are using for their sole and for their uh, base, uh, they are very comfortable in our foot. So whether the thing is comfortable or not comfortable, design means only the features of shape. So anything can be registered as a design if that particular shape is unique. Uh, it is unique to that particular thing. I will give you certain examples for that also. Uh, you can see the examples like these are certain industrial designs. Let me complete the definition first. Apply to an article, whether in two dimensional or three dimensional or in both forms. So the design may be applied to any article and it could be applied in two dimensional or three dimensional form or in both form and by any industrial process or means, whether manual, mechanical, chemical, separate or combined, which in the finished article appeal to and just fully design. So in the finished article, the design must be appealing to your eyes. It must be judged by your eyes. Only. Right. Uh, if we take uh, some consumer products, they are having certain industrial designs. And you can see these are the products which are having certain designs. Pharmaceutical products, you can see. These are all registered designs. Textile and jewelry. Now, these are the rights, uh, you know, once uh, design is registered the proprietor of the registered design has the exclusive right to apply the design to any article in the class in which the design is registered so please keep in mind that you know design rights are very you know like you might have seen uh, the design of a new brezza car so what they have done they have just unveiled a new facelift we have seen the facelift of a new maruti suzuki brezza car so someone may be owning a Brezza of 2022-2021 because they have not changed the engine or any other specific features. All the things remain same. What they did, they just changed the look. So the design is registered. That design, that look, that appearance will be given protection to that particular brand. And they can get it registered. They can have the rights on that design. And these rights are given for a period of five years. What is excluded? Uh, any kind of a trademark, property mark, any kind of an artistic work. These things are excluded from the registration of design. So any mode or principle of construction or anything which in substance a mere mechanical device, these things are excluded from the registration of design. So method of construction, any mode or any principle, these things are excluded from the design. As I told you that design rights are not concerned with the technical aspect of anything. They are only concerned with the look of that. 
and that is why the trademark, the property, and artistic marks they are excluded from the registration of the design. What is not registrable? Uh, something which is not new or which is not original, or uh, something which has been already disclosed to the public anywhere in the world prior to the filing, or uh, a design which is not significantly distinguished from the no designs or the combination of no designs. A design which comprises or contains some standards or obscene matter, a design which is contrary to public order or morality. These are certain examples like religious symbols, labels, tokens, near workshop alterations. These are not registered as designs, maps, building plans, medals. They are all excluded, but there are some standard things. Now, if I take a definition of a trademark, it's a name of an enterprise or a mark which is capable of being represented graphically, distinguishing the goods or services of one person from those of another. So trademark is a mark uh, which may be owned by an individual or it may be owned by a company. And it is an individual IP right. It can be a collective IP right. It includes signs, words, letters, numbers. All these things can be registered as a trademark. Like you may be knowing the trademark Lux. TVS, TVS in itself is a, you know, is a brand name, it's a trademark, uh, a very common name, Apple, so anything, it can be a color, a drawing, emblem, color combination, shape of words, graphical representation or packaging or anything else, all these things can be registered. Again, uh, there is a registry for the trademark, the initial registration is for 10 years, but you can get it renewed every, uh, every 10 years you can get it renewed for another 10 years. If we talk about the kinds of trademark, we have service mark, collective mark, certification mark, well known marks, and trade names. And these are the definitions of service marks, includes banking, education, finance, insurance, etc. Certification marks means uh, a mark which is certified by the proprietor as having certain specific characteristics that may be uh, to, uh, pertaining to the origin or the ingredients or the quality of that product. Like if we have a particular certification trademark on any goods, let us support on any Boolean products, uh, the product may be having a trademark that may be from the product may be by a Woodland company or some other company that is having their own trademark. But if it is having a wool mark, it suggests that that particular product certifies to that particular quality. But in general, trademark is not a mark of a quality, but whole certification trademark can be uh, uh, said to be a mark of a quality. Collective mark is used by the organization, by the associations, like if you are uh, a registered, uh, you know, startup uh, by the two, three persons, maybe the founding members, they can collectively use that mark in their dealings with the public. They are actually owned by that. It could be the manufacturers, producers, suppliers, traders, or the professional bodies like the Institute of Chartered Accountant, Test Credit Reviewer, etc. These are certain examples Coca Cola, you can see the trademark, strawberry in chocolates, you can see the trademark, golden in chili bulbs. They can also take certain other forms visual forms, audio forms, and olfactory forms. Like, you know, if you open or if you are applying particular, uh, you know, perfume, then the particular smell of that perfume can also be registered as an olfactory mark as a train. Audio, like sounds, musical notes, if something like, you know, uh, some news start on a news channel at a particular point at a particular news channel, you may, you may not be having your face towards the screen, but you can very well recognize that what particular you know, news is playing on that TV. So with this, uh, the sound and musical notes can also be registered. Uh, otherwise, visual marks, I have already told you that the words, letters, or numerals, or anything which can be represented in two-dimensional or three-dimensional forms can also be uh, given protection in case of trademark. We are certain rights, like if you have registered, you can use those trademark on your things or on our goods, whatever you are interested Geographical indication is another uh, IP uh, which indicates uh, 
Come over, you need to know that it is applied to agricultural goods, natural goods, or manufactured goods. And a GI is an indication, you know, which indicates that these agricultural or natural or manufactured goods are originating or being manufacturing or being, you know, processing within a particular territory or a region or locality in that country. Where the given quality, reputation or other essential characteristic of that good is essentially attributed to that geographic area. So uh, it is very simple. Number one, you need to know and you have to, you know, very clear that geographical indication is applied for agricultural goods, natural goods and manufactured goods. Number two, they indicate the area or the locality or the region where they are being agriculturally produced or naturally or manufactured. So these two things you need to keep in mind. You have, uh, you know, so many examples of GI like Alfonso Mango, Baspati Rice, and uh, banara silk all these things are very famous for that particular place in india the registration a uh, gi is, has to be registered uh, if it is not registered like in case of aligar uh, i belongs to aligar we have a very huge aligar lock industry uh, uh, locks are being manufactured here they are being carried over to for india as well as outside india but we do not have any registered gi they may be having their brand name, their product name, their trademark name, but there is no GI for that registration. Uh, that is also, uh, GI is also registered for 10 years. And again, just like trademark can be renewed from time to time. You can have the right to obtain a relief in case of infringement if it is not registered. Then uh, layer designs uh, that must be original, novel, uh, design, if it is not original and novel, just like patents invention, you cannot get a register. It has to be registered or before that it has to be examined and published. This registration is valid for, for 10 years. And these are certain non-registrable designs, a design which is not new, which has been commercially exploited anywhere in India or in a convention country. A design which is not inherently distinctive or which is not inherently capable of being distinguished from the already registered layout design, they are not registered. Trade secret is the last IP which I'm going to discuss today. Uh, like some inventions, data and information cannot be protected by any other available means of IPR. Such information can be held as confidential or it can be protected as trade secrets. It can be an invention, idea, survey method, manufacturing process, experiment results, chemical formula, recipe, financial strategy, client database. Uh, sometimes trade secret are preferred over invention when invention is not patentable. It is advisable to you that if invention is not patentable, you can go for a trade secret protection. In case of patent, the protection is limited for 20 years, but in case of trade secret, the protection is actually not uh, limited by time. It is uh, for time and memory. And in patent also, the cost of patent protection are very prohibitive. Uh, you have to pay a huge cost and it is also very difficult to reverse engineer. You can restrict the number of people having access to trade secret information by, you know, uh, by marking that particular area as a confidential area. You can also sign a non-confidentiality agreement with the business partners and employees. You can use protective techniques like digital data security tools and restricting entry into an area where a trade secret is worked or held. We also have certain national legislation which provide for protection of injunctions and damages if a secret information will be provided on those. Uh, licensing is another form uh, of IP, you know, uh, transfer of technology because uh, once uh, licensing is actually a kind of a permission uh, given by an IP owner to another person to use that IP on agreed terms and conditions while he continues to retain the ownership of IP. So just like uh, any other type of property I told you in the beginning, like movable and immobile property, uh, you are having a right to license that property. Just like in case of IP also, you have a right to give a license or you have a right to give a permission to use some uh, rights. You can give certain rights to your intellectual property to someone else on agreed terms and conditions. And you still remains to be the owner of that IP. Uh, it actually creates a source of income. It establishes a legal framework for the transfer of technology to a wider group of researchers and engineers. It actually creates a market presence for your technology.
owner of IP actually prefers to transfer technology through licensing agreements. All the rights are limited uh, by the agreement only. It can be exclusive or non-exclusive. Uh, it needs to be, uh, and one needs to be careful about uh, competition laws, I told you in the way. So this is all uh, on the basics of IP. I'm trying to uh, share uh, a link. If I can get that link. Now uh, one second. Yes. I've been asked by some students. Okay. Uh, okay. I am repeating the question that yes. some students are asking that they have some uh, idea and they have made some sketches. Okay. Uh, on the utilization of some drones, drone technology in agriculture. For example, uh, a spray up uh, some pesticides, fertilizers, and etc. This is actually a business model type. Can okay. they protect their idea uh, in this raw form? Okay, uh, what I uh, what I get from you is that some students are asking that they have developed the technology uh, in the drone uh, sector, uh, wherein uh, the technology may relate to the like suppose spreading of pesticides in the agriculture field. So, can they go for uh, patenting that technology? Okay, fine. A very good question. Uh, actually, you know, a uh, lot of patents are being, you know, granted in this particular area. So for those students who are working in that technology, uh, my suggestion to them is uh, you should go on uh, with your research. But uh, either if you have started the research or if you are working on that, you please try to get know that what are the available technologies in that particular field. So if the technology which is they are going to invent, which they might not have invented right now, and they assume and they believe that in near future, they are going to invent that particular technology in drone sector, they need to know the existing patents. They need to know the existing state of technologies which are already being protected, which are already being given granted patents. If they invented something, thereby they are not given a patent on the basis that it is already being granted, then it will be uh, you know, uh, very bad for them. So it is better that they should first read all the available technologies, all the available literature, all the granted patents, not only in India, but throughout the world. And this is uh, sometimes it feels difficult for a student, but it is very easy. Uh, I can share you separately certain you know links to uh, the search engines. Like uh, if we go to the patent office website, Indian patent office website, they have a very good uh, search engine, IP in pass. IP in pass, if you, uh, if you Google it, you can go to that particular page, IP in pass, wherein if you enter certain keywords of your research, of your technology, uh, you will be having a list of all the available literature, all the available technologies in that particular field. So what you need to understand is that your technology must be different in some way from the already existing technology is whether they are protected by patent or not protected by patent. So this is very important for any uh, agriculture uh, students or any student of the that they should be very particular about it. Sir, we, uh, we have developed some bio fertilizers. Uh, I that, that is a combination of different type of microbes. And there is a provision that live microbes or any living organisms cannot be patented in isolation. Therefore, but we have uh, developed a consortia of uh, different type of microbes that is useful for enhancing the productivity of agriculture. Uh, can we patent this uh, particular combination of different type of microbes if uh, one uh, single microbe cannot be patented? So, uh, genetically modified mi microbes can obviously can be patented. You can go for patenting of genetically modified microbes, but obviously uh, we have not modified them genetically. These are natural. We have isolated them from agricultural soil, 
and we are using uh, these microbes by multiplying in uh, at a large scale in agriculture uh, as far as my understanding is concerned sir uh, these native microorganisms in the original form cannot be patented i believe but however uh, microbes like yeast bacteria protozoa uh, they can be patented if they have been genetically modified we were considering uh, 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 we know that individual microbes cannot be patented but uh, uh, we wanted to know if a consortia that is a combination of uh, microbes that is a uh, similar to a formulation a formula because a micro microbe a is present in uh, particular percentage microbe b is present in that part in particular percentage this formula can be patented or not uh, that needs to be uh, seen from case to case basis there cannot be a straight jacket formula for that if you can establish that this consortium of microbes has resulted into a new uh, kind of a thing uh, and you can see there is only three requirements the first is novelty another is inventive step and novelty and inventive step are related to each, each other and in the steel application is the third aspect obviously that thing must have some kind of a use obviously you are not making anything for not for a, any kind of a use but obviously if the consortium of macros has resulted into something which you can uh, typically say that it has resulted or that has resulted into some kind of a new thing uh, then obviously you that depends obviously but how you can approach or how the patent attorney can approach the patent office but in that case obviously if that resulted into a new thing then obviously you can go for a patent but uh, regarding that uh, naturally occurring macros they cannot but but that is very sure genetically modified you can go but the consortium uh, like uh, if i can give you an example of two uh, thing like if you uh, if you know there is a medicine a uh, which gives relief in pain and there is a medicine b which gives relief in uh, fever if you combine these two medicine these two formulas to and she performs the functions of medicine a as well as medicine b yeah. so this is nothing but a formula of a plus b is equal to c wherein c performs the functions of a as well as c as well as b but c has not resulted into any other function so this these formulas are not actually being patented Ah, yes. Yeah. But if like I can again give you an example of uh, you know, uh, let us suppose uh, we we know that there is a fan, ceiling fan. What function it perform? And uh, we know the function which uh, any rickshaw perform. We are, we are going. Uh, we are moving towards a rickshaw or through a rickshaw. If that has resulted, these two are different things. These two are different inventions. They two these two perform different functions. And once uh, there is a rickshaw by a company wherein they have fitted a, a fan, and a fan is performing a different function, rickshaw is performing a different function. That whole body combined together, obviously perform these two functions. That has not resulted into any other function. So if you combine two th or more things, that resulted into a new thing, which can be said that it is new, it is novel, it performs different function. Then obviously you can go for it. So this is very, uh, very specific about uh, you know uh, these uh, microbes and all these. Things. Therefore, uh, on behalf of the College of Agriculture Sciences, uh, I am uh, thanking you, sir, for very interesting and very knowledgeable lecture. Uh,